Hello, I'm going to post a short portion of this fantastic lecture by Erica Reiner, Hallad Herbs, uh, back in 1988. The audio is not the best, I've tried to fix it as best I can. The lecture will be on ancient magic, especially how it's connected to medicine and especially to herbs. For instance, the castor oil plant, you've probably heard of uh, castor oil. In this lecture, she'll talk about how words and phrases of these ancient alchemist apothecaries, uh, medicine people, root diggers, would use colourful language to describe their words and that these translations, uh, for instance the uh, terminology for certain plants, have a, have a very fantastic name and this leads to, back in ancient times, the priests of the temple had to go out of their way to explain to the people that these fantastic terms are not literal. So, for instance, uh, Eye of Newt did not necessarily mean Eye of Newt. Now, that's not a term she's going to use, but I'm just saying uh, when it comes to Hollywood and stuff, we hear these terms, but there is a uh, double meaning behind these. She'll also discuss the importance of astronomy and astrology in that herbs had to be picked at a certain time and usually involved some sort of ritual connected to them. I'll also be showing uh, images of certain plants and they will link to the Voynich, uh, Voynich manuscript because the larger portion of a Voynich manuscript is to do with herbs and plants. There's also apothecary jars and uh, astronomy which would relate to when a certain plant would be picked. This would also connect to the Greek magical papyri which were found in Egypt and these very old hermetic documents which the alchemy includes medicine and other features and also because of the importance of keeping it secret, keeping it safe and how these terms were to keep trade secrets and because the terms become popular, um, uh, lion's fat for instance or the sperm of Hermes, the translation is actually to a simple herb. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this as just a small portion. It is good for Scorpio sting. It's mode of preparation to dry, to crush, to give to drink in beer. Obviously, these descriptions are very much like those found in the spells collected in the Hellenistic magical papyri, written in Greek or in Demotic. For example, the Cantritis plant grows from the months of Piney onward in the regions of the Black Earth, that is Egypt, and is similar to the erect verbena. This is how to recognize it. If an ibis, ibis wing is dipped at its black tip and smeared with the juice, the feathers fall off when touched. Its stem is single and reddish down to the root, and the leaves are also crinkled and have fruit like the tip of wild asparagus. It is similar to the so-called talates, like the wild beet. This very cantritis is best picked, as the same papyrus recommends, at the night of the new moon, when the sun is in Leo. And from a demotic magical papyrus, in Jane Johnson's translation, the ivy, it grows in gardens. Its leaf is like the leaf of a shechem plant, being divided into three lobes like a grape leaf. It is one palm in measurement, its blossom is like silver, another manuscript says gold. While many plant names, among them the ones I have quoted, are untranslatable, others, like the dog's tongue I've also mentioned, are meaningful but outlandish. Yet the ox blood, human skull, or lion's blood, appearing in Babylonian texts, are really no stranger than the humble herbs white lettuce, pork, and lamb squatters that the root diggers gather today. And how about foxglove or snapdragon? It is again the Hellenistic propriety that provides us with a clue. And I quote, Because of the masses' eagerness to practice magic, the temple scribes inscribed the names of the herbs and other things which they employed on the statues of the gods so that the masses, as a consequence of their misunderstanding, might not practice magic. But we have collected the explanations of these names from many copies of the sacred writings, 
all of them secret. Here they are. The snake's head, a leech. Blood of a snake, hematite. Lion semen, human semen. Semen of Hermes, bill. Blood from the head, lupine. Blood of Hephaestus, Artemisia. Human bile, turnip sap. Fat from the head, spurge. But note, blood of porcupine, really from the porcupine. <laughs> and Campbell Thompson also realized in his introduction to his dictionary of Assyrian chemistry and geology that the Assyrian was ready to call what was almost certainly opium, which is a nice painting of the puppy here, but not from Mesopotamia, by name of lion fat or human fat or castor oil as the blood of a black snake. Other plant names are less fanciful, even though they may betray wishful thinking. 